Hi, so as you see here, we are looking at scatter plots, and we're looking at scatter plots that exist both in Power BI, in Python also. And you can see you might get a little bit more options when you're dealing with uh, Python, and honestly, there are a lot more than this, but I didn't want to overwhelm you. So I'm going to go through how to create these and also um, where this data comes from. So this data comes from a data set that you can load using the Seaborn library. And all of these visuals were actually created with the Seaborn library. Uh, so I'm going to show you that data set very quickly. So you can see the data here. Um, I'm going to go over to the table. And you can see what this is, is a diamonds data set. And I've brought in 15,000 rows as indicated in there. And this is actually not the full data set. The full data set has about 60,000 different diamonds. And you can see it has carrot, cut, color, clarity, depth, table, price, and then some of the dimensions here, X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to show you how I brought that in with the transform uh, data. So we go into the Power Query Editor. I have my data set here and I go up to source. What you can see is I use the Seaborn library. I imported that, saved it as the variable SNS. Then I loaded in DF as like just a variable. And I used the load data set function and passed in diamonds, which is the data set that you can use. And then the then what I did, I sampled 15,000 of those diamonds because uh, I didn't want to bring all 60,000 in because it is a lot and I kind of wanted everything to run very quickly, but we can actually visualize all 60,000. So I'm going to close this. Don't need to apply and let's dive into the scatter plots. So the first one is a Power BI scatter plot and I am going to use the view here and zoom all the way into actual size. And we can see this is a Power BI scatter plot just made with the Power BI visuals. And you can see there is a um, information point here. And if I click that, you can see it, what it's telling us is that it's only showing the significant points so you can see the shape of the data um, and the outliers, but it's sampling. So you're not able to see all 15,000 of those points. There is a limit, so it samples that and doesn't show you all of them. However, when you go, you start digging into Python, it does not actually sample those. So I'm going to go down to a traditional scatter plot here. And you can see there are a lot of points here, and they're different colors, and I'll tell you why. So this is just a Seaborn scatter plot, and I just used a categorical to show all of the different kinds of uh, particular uh, points there and it splits it up by that all 15,000 are there and I'm going to show you the syntax of the Python it does not really change with Seaborn so we import matplotlib as uh, dot pyplot as plt and that allows us to show the visual at the end we're going to import Seaborn save it as a variable sns now once we have that variable we can just pass in different plotting functions like scatter plot. Once we get that function, we need to give it the data, which is data set. And data set is all the fields that you're going to bring in here. And you can see that it's been brought in and any duplicates has been dropped. And then I use X for my, um, my X axis. I'm using carrots. Y, I'm using price and then I use an edge color and the reason I use edge color here because what you run in here is you see nothing but blue but if we put an edge around each individual um, point we can see them a little bit better and then all I did was use hue and hue is a categorical um, grouping um, argument that allows us to group these by all of the different colors there so let me close this down and the next visual over is going to be a LM plot. And this is just linear regression. Um, it's just going to put a linear regression line there in the middle. I can click into that. And it's going to be the same kind of syntax. We get matplotlib, save it as plt, seaborn. And then we're using the LM plot function, 
Same syntax, data set X, Y. The only difference here is I wanted to make sure that I passed in a color for the line which is a regression line, and then I passed in the color red. So this is a key value point for those line keywords. Let's go to the next one, and the next ones are kernel density plots. So you are not limited to just a scatter plot. You can just separate the X and Y plane and use different visuals to give you the same effect as a scatter plot because it's showing that relationship. So a kernel density plot is showing you how dense your data is. And if we look at the top here, you can see it gets very dark and black. That's because all of these are starting to bunch up. And if you look at our kernel density plot, you can see also it's most dense in that area. Also, you can see there is an aggregation of points here. And this is also picked up in our kernel density plot. Same syntax as you saw before. We use our SNS variable. We use KDE plot. Pass in our data set. Specify our X and Y price. So now the other one is also a KDE plot. The only difference here is that we fill this and we used a color sequential color. So if I click into this, you can see that if we look at the particular um, script. All I did was pass in the same data set, X and Y. We use the parameter or argument fill equals true. And then we use cool warm as the particular sequential color. Now I, you can change this to anything you want. I think there's one called magma. So let's run that and see what we get. And you can see the visual being run here. So as you see, we have a different color scheme. We can see where it's kind of hot here. That's why it's called magma, is where the densest points are. And then we can see the shape of our um, scatter plot and then a kind of a dense section here that is also replicated in your traditional scatter plot. The next one that we're looking at here is a histogram. So we've taken a histogram and oriented it with X and Y. We can also see the darkened points here and it looks very digitized. It's just another way to view a scatter plot. And then here is also a histogram. This is called a joint plot. And you can see there is joint between a scatter plot and a histogram here. So the histogram shows the distribution of your X and Y variables, price, and carrot. And if I jump into that joint plot here, you can see all of the different things that are, oops, wrong one here. Uh, our joint plot has just our X and Y. We can pass in the same kind of um, variables, but to make it look more like uh, your traditional scatter plot. But let's do this. We are going, in this one, we're actually able to pass in a function called kind, and I believe it's called hex, and I'm going to run that. Hopefully this is the right syntax, and you can see that running there. And for the hex, what you actually see um, is you can see that it only shows you kind of a, a hex, and I wish I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see this, where it's just kind of a hex kind of view of things um, and maybe we can see that a little bit better if we had other colors but let me continue on the last one that we have is a combination of a histogram and a KDE plot and the way we've been able to create this is we able to create this using just two plots because in Python uh, or matplotlib, what you're able to see is a figure. This is called a figure. And unless we specify two graphs have different figures, we can layer them on the top of each one. So you can see all I've done is brought in a histogram. And in the histogram, I've brought in the X and Y for our carrot, and then I've kept the color red. And then for a KDE plot, I've just made sure that it has 
uh, just the traditional ones, and it's not filled. And the result is we get kind of a striking image here where it shows exactly where the density should be, and we can see the scatter plot. So now that you have all of these, you can definitely, you know, create a filter or something so you can change these. But I'm not going to do this because what I have, let me put this out, fit the page. So you can see all of the different scatter plots. But what I've learned is like if you have a lot of Python visuals running with a lot of data, some of them it will actually break. So I kind of recommend just not using a bunch on one page. But you can see from the scatter plots that we have a lot of different options. There is also a 3D scatter plot. And I've done a video on that with Enterprise DNA, so you might want to check that out. If you and this is not the only scatter plots that exist out there. If you're interested in seeing more, please you know like and I'll leave a comment below so we know what you guys are interested in. Thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.